Hello and welcome. I'm Stephanie Greppling with Manatee Educational Television. We're here at the 2018 American Cancer Society Making Strides Against Breast Cancer kickoff at the beautiful Sarasota Ritz-Carlton. We're so excited. Buckle in because we are going to talk to survivors, supporters, and sponsors all about advocating for breast cancer. We are here at the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer kickoff and we are here with the Survivors in Sync with Angela. Angela, tell me a little bit about your Dragon Boat Ladies. Well, we're an all breast cancer survivor team here in Sarasota. We practice at Nathan Benderson Park three days out of the week. Um, there's about 40 of us on the roster. Uh, Dragon boating is uh, made up of 20 paddlers in the boat at one time with a drummer and a steers person. And we're focused on um, paddling forward. And you ladies, I must say, are fit. You are very fit. Pat, why don't you tell me a little bit about the adventure that your team just took abroad? We were in Florence, Italy in July, and we came in fourth in the world. <laughs> What an accomplishment for you ladies. Now, how long has this team been together? We've only been together around four years. We got started um, in 2014 uh, when the festival was here in Sarasota. So four years, uh, we got to number four. So we're excited what the future may bring. <laughs> and where do you practice? At Nathan Benderson Park. And will you be there on the day of the walk as well? Yes, we will. We will be there. Um, you'll see us paddling on the water. Hopefully we'll also have a table there for uh, more information and you'll, you'll see our, our pack. Well, I can't wait to see you ladies in action on the day of the walk. I know that you'll really motivate everybody that's walking that day. Being a team of survivors, how, how does that, the camaraderie of that team motivate you? It's uh, pretty incredible. I think we have an instant bond uh, and on the team. Um, most of us, you know, of course we're all women, but um, having that diagnosis in our uh, past, we just have this instant camaraderie. We know what each other has been through for the most part, so we have that bond and, and knowing. Um, but we don't stay focused on the disease. We focus on our health and moving forward and, um, you know, on the future. Yeah. Wonderfully said. Now, Pat, how do you recruit new, new sisters? And well, we're here doing that very thing. And on Saturday, we have a new paddler day. So we're recruiting to see if anybody's interested in joining. They can come and try out on Saturday. So we encourage them to come out Saturday morning. Wonderful. Well, thank you, ladies, for showing your support on this kickoff day. And we can't wait to see you on October 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Angela, how can people get in touch with your organization? Well, they can go to our website, and that is at uh, survivorsinsync.org. They can also go to nathanbendersonpark.org also. But Wonderful. I'm sure you'll get a great response. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm here with Joy at the Real Men Wear Pink table. Joy, tell us a little bit about this program that you're chairing. So the Real Men Wear Pink um, is a wonderful campaign where we get about 20 to 25 community leaders, men in the community who agree to become the face of breast cancer for the month of October. They each raise a minimum of $2,500. They have, we have a lot of events for them. They have a great time and um, they just, just participate and we have fun. Now I heard a rumor that there is this fashion show 
Tell me a little bit about this fashion show at the University Town Center Mall. There is. There is a wonderful event for the men. Um, it's on the 29th of September in the middle of the UTC Mall. The men will be dressed by the stores and come out and present with a fashion show. And they get very nervous, but they have a wonderful time. I cannot wait to see all of these gentlemen that yes. have graciously raised all this money for such a wonderful cause get out there and just entertain the crowd and just raise awareness. That's, that's what this is all that's about, is raising money and awareness. Yes, it is. Joy, why do you think it's so important for men to get involved in you know, making strides against breast cancer, not only women, but men? Well, men, there's two reasons for that, because breast cancer is not selective to females only. It does affect men. And in addition, um, every man has a woman. They have a mother, they have a daughter, they have a sister. So it's very important that they're out there raising awareness and showing their support. I think it's fabulous. I know that you're going to have a, a great yep. fashion show this year. I see lots of great men in the community um, supporting this event, and it's very encouraging. And, and hopefully that will encourage other men to exactly. participate exactly. In, the, in the next year's. If you know anybody that you think would be a good candidate, please let us know here at American Cancer Society. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Thank you. I am here with none other than Pookie from Team Pookie. Tell me why you started getting involved in making strides. Well, I started, uh, this is our fifth year, and we started because of Pookie. I'm not Pookie. Pookie is not here this time. She moved to Pennsylvania, but she got diagnosed with breast cancer, and she, uh, we couldn't believe it. And it was amazing to us, so we decided to go with it, and, and that was fun. Um, and we kept going. And we uh, kept going, and now we've been doing this for five years. Um, we've lost uh, Susie Bruce, who was one of our fighters. Uh, she went four rounds of uh, cancer, and she finally lost it. Um, uh, I can't stand when I talk about her. Um, uh, so now we, uh, we get out there and we fight for everybody. Um, this year, we, uh, we've accomplished being number one in the state two years in a row. What an accomplishment yeah, that is. We have raised $73,000 in four years. Um, so this year, we, we are going um, for, the, for the whole thing. We are going to be number one in the state. We want to be the number one team in the state of Florida. I mean, being number one in Manatee County is, is awesome, but now it's time to make a point and come out there and come out and running we are doing some events we've got 13 events we're doing this year and one of them is my baby it's called kicking cancer country style i love the theme it is it's four great country bands local bands um we are going to uh it's going to be an all-day affair they're all playing for 90 minutes um there it's a five dollar entry every dime goes to making strides and Team Pookie. Um, you know, our goal is to make $25,000 at this event. Um, we really want it to be big in Manatee you know, County. Um, we've got some wonderful sponsors. Uh, Mosaic, I mean, Manatee Memorial, USA Fence. I mean, everybody in the community is coming together and joining us. Um, we have a lot of non-for-profits that are joining us and helping us. Realize Bradenton, who is here, is with us today. They're right there in the corner. And they're here helping us to build this and make it big and to let us take on number one in the state. And that's what our goal is this year. What is your ultimate goal to raise this year? Uh, $55,000 in one in four months. That's so incredible. So incredible. We can do it. I, 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 don't, think, I don't think we won't. I mean, there's no, there's no possible that we can't do it. Um, I, I, I know in my heart we'll do it because We've done it every year. I mean, last year we did 38,000 without doing a big event. So this year bringing, you know, kicking cancer country style, I think we're good. How many members do you have on your team right now? Um, we'll end up with close to 30. And not everybody gives. I mean, there's people that, that, that get out there and we support all the survivors. So they come and walk with us. And some people like the, we have a lot of energy and people like that. So they come out and, and walk with us, and, and, and they take the pride, wear the shirt. We've got a lot of the community involved. We've got a, you know, the church, a couple of pastors here today. I mean, we're doing our best to get everybody involved.
That's wonderful that you are just taking the bull and running with it. Yeah, we're trying. We are trying. What does it mean to you to still be so involved in this event um, as you have been through so much with your friends and their diagnosis um, to keep this event going? It means everything. I mean, it is four months of peer pressure. I wear this. I don't take the bracelet off. Everybody, every survivor is my hero. Um, the event is October the 7th. Um, we're really excited about it. Actually, the flyers got done today. They're on every table. October the 7th, it's from 10 to 6. I want to see all of Manatee and Sarasota County there. And where, where is the event? At the Volkswagen? At, yes, it's at Volkswagen, Bob Bo's Volkswagen, right on 41. Can't wait to see you there. I can't wait. I can't wait to see you guys there. That's good. I'm here with Virginia and Debbie at the kickoff event. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your story and why you're involved at the kickoff event? Sure. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2015. I had a double mastectomy, reconstructive surgery, and the amazing thing was that I was already involved with Team ACS, which for many years was the number one team in the event. And uh, the minute that that happened, I let them know, and I was surprised how many people came out of the woodwork. Oh, I'm a survivor. I can tell you what to do, where to go, how to do it, how it works. And just the support that I received from Team ACS was incredible. Wow, what a true testament of the organization and that just the outpouring of love and support. That's exactly what it was. It's all love and support all the way around. And uh, I was involved before that, and I continue to be involved because I kind of want to pay that forward. I want to pass that on. Wonderful. And we're here with your best friend, Debbie. Yes. Debbie, you, I understand that you guys are just best to friends. She's been my best friend for as long as I can say, and I can't even begin to tell you what a strong survivor she is. She has just barreled through this like nobody else I've ever seen. She sat through her chemotherapy, her radiation, and never complained one time. And I know ACS was a big part of that because we've been involved with ACS since about 2003. So what does that mean to have such a wonderful support system? Uh, it's just awesome. I don't know how anyone can get through it without a support system, and that's why ACS is so important, because through ACS, every woman can have a support system to help them. What would you say to a woman who's been recently diagnosed and feels that she has no support system? I would say get on the phone, call ACS, get involved. Um, all of the teams here tonight will have fundraising events. Show up at one. Uh, so many times we've been having a fundraising event in a restaurant somewhere, and a woman walks in the door and says, Hi, I'm in chemo right now. And everyone comes out, surrounds her, hugs her with love, makes her kind of our star of the night. And so there, there's a lot of people, particularly in the Sarasota area, who are going through this. It's amazing. I mean, I remember being at the doctor, and every time I was there, I would run into another woman that I knew that was now diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's, it's everywhere, uh, there's a lot of support. Just step up, show up, ask for it. And this is just the beginning. This is just the kickoff night. We have several more events to go. The Real Men Wear Pink, we have the walk on October 20th, and then all month long is, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we are so excited to have such a wonderful event to celebrate the survivors and the supporters all in one room. It really, really makes a wonderful kickoff atmosphere. So thank you ladies for being here. I'm here with Maverick Johnson. Maverick, tell me about why you wanted to be involved in this event and why it's so near and dear to you. You know, in 1999, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and that year I was approached by members in the American Cancer Society uh, to volunteer for an event. And ever since 1999, I've been involved with the American Cancer Society. My mom, knock on wood, is a breast cancer survivor. And I'm a true believer in what the American Cancer Society preaches. Early detection really does save lives. Uh, women need to know about their breasts, their density. They need to know about their body. They need to have those mammograms done. So what the American Cancer Society does from fundraising to education is just crucial. What would you want to tell a woman who has been recently diagnosed about the services at the American Cancer Society. You know, a lot of times when you uh, are diagnosed, you're fearful, 
because you don't know. And information really is power. You hear that a lot, but especially with a cancer diagnosis and breast cancer, there are so many support systems from transportation to help with people that have been through your shoes. Reach out, an email, a phone call, it can change your life and your outlook after you've been diagnosed. How did that impact you as watching your family member go through breast cancer? Because one in seven women experience that. You know, it doesn't become real till you see your mom start to lose her hair. And I think once you've had the experience of someone that is so close to you really face life or death, you really can't grasp it. And I think once you've been through those steps, you never turn back in terms of wanting to help other people if you can. Maverick, you're looking very, very dapper this evening. Are you channeling a little bit for the real men in pink? Because I understand that you'll be walking in the fashion show. Yeah, that's what they tell me. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be fasting until then. In terms of outfits, uh, I wear what they tell me to wear. So I'm going to be at their mercy for that night. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a great entertaining event. Again, raising awareness for such a great cause. Absolutely. Try to understand that everything we do here is really about education and raising funds, both twofold. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm here with Joanne, this beautiful survivor celebrating how many years? 15 years as survivor. That's so wonderful. Very amazing, yes. How are you so tied into this mission and cause? You keep coming back for more. You're a dragon boat. Yes, I am. I'm a dragon boat paddler yes. with, on an all breast cancer survivor team, which is amazing because we're all different and yet have just they're, they're the most loveliest my sisters I truly adore being with them um, but yeah it's 15 years it feels honestly like it was yesterday um, this is a huge part of my life it's a huge part of who I've become my children at the time when I was diagnosed were two and five and my daughter is in her third year of college and my son is in his senior year of high school I, I bet they are immensely proud of they, you they, yes they are they are it's been an amazing amazing adventure amazing adventure well, thank you for being here thank tonight you. and continuing to show your support to other women yes. who are still in diagnosis and treatment, uh, that there is hope. There is hope. Fifteen years later, there's hope here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a terrible, it's a terrible ordeal at the time. The journey is there, but you do walk away from it. And I've walked away a much better person, much different values. Um, and I wouldn't change who I am today, and it's made me who I am today. Well, that's wonderful inspiration for anybody who's listening who's going through some, some hard times right now. I understand that you're going to be helping out on the day of the walk as well. Yes, actually, I am so excited. It's the most beautiful day that I could, you could spend in October. I mean, so thousands, 10,000 women come out to support breast cancer. You know, when I was diagnosed 15 years ago, there really weren't any pink balloons. And then to see 10,000 people come out to support something that was like, you know, kind of pushed under the rug years ago is just amazing. And it's to see all the families and all the ladies and it's just I, I feel so alive I just enjoy every moment of it and I I love all the stories and I love to, it's just it's just an, a great event so definitely October 20th Benderson Park definitely get there it is just amazing and if I understand a little bit about your story you self-diagnosed absolutely yes I did it was uh, my son Michael who lived on my hip actually was taking a nap and I thought for the first time I'm gonna take a shower without him banging on the shower door and uh, what, there it was, I found a lump. So crazy, but you know. Early detection is, is key everything. to your breast exam. Uh, absolutely, it's, it's, yes. it's not a death sentence, breast cancer anymore. So, you know, do that breast exam and you know, just, just be aware of your breast. And if something doesn't seem right, ask the doctor. Don't be embarrassed, nothing is stupid. There's no silly question. That's right. Be comfortable. Touch them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Dr. Anna Widmer, and she is a plastic surgeon for Hillstrom Wright Plastic Surgery, and you specialize in breast surgeries. I do. I have a real passion for breast cancer reconstruction. My own sister was a breast cancer survivor, and she inspired me to want to do uh, breast cancer reconstruction for women. What would you say is um, probably the biggest thing that women can do um, to advocate for themselves and to do probably self-exams? So I always like to educate women when they come into my office to make sure that they know 
uh, what their options are for reconstruction, but also how to um, undergo early detection. So we've been making a lot of strides uh, towards curing breast cancer, and particularly in this country um, with access to health care. So every woman should get a mammogram starting at age 40 on a yearly basis. And it's also really important to do self-exams. And I actually usually tell women to do that in the shower. And when they're in the shower or just washing under their arms just to see if they feel any lumps or bumps themselves. Um, or if they have nipple discharge or anything that just seems out of the usual to uh, contact their, uh, their primary care doctor and get in for a mammogram. What would you tell to a newly diagnosed patient that is just coming to you for the first time? So I would let them know that although there's a lot of stress at the beginning of the journey, that there's also a lot of hope and that we've really made a lot of uh, strides towards curing cancer. And so I always start with finding out exactly what their diagnosis is and helping them with their stage and just explaining to them what to expect throughout the process. So for any women who are interested in getting reconstructive surgery, how would they get in contact with you? So they can call the office and schedule an appointment. Uh, we're always available to answer questions. Even if they've already had a reconstruction and there's something that they're unhappy with or if they had a lumpectomy and radiation and didn't have any reconstruction, there's always options. And I also try to make sure um, and advocate, advocate for women and let them know that Almost every health insurance company pays for every stage of the breast cancer, so not to be afraid to come in um, and just have a consult. That's very good advice, because um, most, most women are intimidated by the cost factor. Uh, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about reconstruction and how intimidating that is to women. So I always like to explain the whole process of reconstruction to women when they come into the office. Uh, the reason that reconstruction is covered by most insurance companies and why it's so important is it just re helps you restore um, your self-confidence and also your sexual well-being. And it's just part of the process of recovering from, from breast cancer. So I always let women know about all of their options when they come into the office. Uh, it's the one part in cancer uh, that really puts the power in your hands. You get to decide if you're going to have any reconstruction at all, if you want to have it at the same time as your mastectomy so that when you wake up there's something there and you don't just have a flat chest. Um, you can also decide whether you want to have breast implants placed or if you want to use your own tissue for reconstruction. And women choose one option or the other for a variety of reasons, sometimes involving your anatomy and sometimes just preference. So it's really the one part of the cancer process that puts the power back in your hands to make some decisions. Wow, so a lot of options out there that will empower women to feel more like themselves after diagnosis. Absolutely. Thank you so much for explaining everything and being that light in a lot of women's lives. Well, thanks for having me here. I'm here with Dr. Trevor Bourne, one of the real men in pink. We are so excited that you decided to commit to being an advocate for breast cancer in our community. Trevor, tell me why you decided to get on board with this um, event. Well, breast cancer obviously is a far too common condition that can affect up to one to eight women throughout their lives. And it's not just the women it affects, it affects the men. And through my profession, I unfortunately see that aspect of it possibly once it's already advanced to a point where we don't want to see it, but it is uh, just something that's way too prevalent and something that I think needs continued research to strive and find ways to fight against. I understand that your wife nominated you for this position. Were you excited to hear that you were nominated for this position? Oh, well, you know, it's always good to have a wife that has your back and uh, thinks that you're fit to, you know, take on these type of roles. Um, Obviously, uh, she's my better half, and uh, if it were to ever affect her, I couldn't imagine how that would make us feel, but um, I'm very privileged. What are you looking forward to most when you walk down that catwalk during the Real Men Wear Pink Fashion Show? I, truthfully, I think most of the work has already probably been done by that point as far as spreading the word, getting the nominations, the donations, uh, and so forth. But, uh, you know, just for people to have a good time, ways more awareness of the condition, um, the disease, and uh, gather even further support behind the research behind it. Well, we are so grateful to have you on the 2018 team. Thank you so much for being here. Any, any comments? 
hopefully I can be on the 2019 team. Oh, I love it. Foresight. Why do you think it's important for men to get involved in such a profound um, awareness campaign? Yeah. Well, again, it affects up to one day eight women. That can be a mother, could be a sister, could be an aunt, could be a child. It uh, affects people into their 20s all the way up until uh, their 80s and 90s. So I think it's, um, it's probable that at some point a man's going to come across a woman who's very closely related to them that's going to have to deal with this condition. And the more they know, the better support they can provide. Also, just to keep them on top of their surveillance, their screenings, uh, being there um, as the, uh, the partner, you know. This isn't something that any woman should have to go through alone. And I think having a vigilant, responsible, faithful man by their side, that can sometimes be the extra motivation, the extra support that a lady needs as they go through treatments, whether it's surgical, chemo, radiation, you name it. Very well said. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I am having the honor and the privilege to speak with Miss Mary Brown today, and she is a survivor. Mary, how many years have you been a survivor? 14 years. And what does that mean to you to be a survivor in remission 14 years? Life. That I am able to live life. It means life to me. Yes. That's the only way that I can say it in general. You know. And Simple and beautifully said. Yes. Yes. My mission is to live 100 years plus. So in order to do that, I have to take care of myself. Yes, as we all do. So is this your first time at this kickoff Making Strides event? Yes, yes. This is my first time. I was invited by Lucy. And usually Thursday is a very busy day. But you always have to find time to do what's important. And I thought this was an important event because it's my first time being here and a chance to meet survivors and other people that I know from the community. And I've met a lot of new people sharing information about raising funds. I am a captain, the uh, Manatee Narcos captain. And we have been working since about 1999. And are you walking at the big event at Nathan Benderson on October 20th? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. We have a lot going on, so I really have to uh, take a look at, at, at that walk. Yeah. It's a very, very powerful, inspiring day, might I add. Yes. I, I'll, I'll look forward to that. Oh. <laughs> I have to share it with my team also. Yeah. yeah. If there's one thing that you could um, say to a newly diagnosed woman, what would that be? I would say be motivated, stay positive, be compassionate, don't think negative. My thing is life. You know, some people feel that it's a death sentence, but it's a life sentence. And what you need to do is look forward to uh, just doing everything spending time with your family, staying motivated. As I said before, be positive, be compassionate, and share love. Well, I feel the compassion and love that you have. It's very inspiring. And I wish you 14, 20, 30, 50 more years of being cancer-free. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Same here. I'm here with two lovely ladies, Kathy and Tony. Kathy, you were just telling me a little bit about your story, and you are a survivor. Yes, I am, thank goodness. Um, the most important advice I could ever give to a woman, or anyone that has a sister, a mother, a friend that's a woman, is to get a mammogram every year besides self-examination, but most importantly in Paramount is a 3D mammogram. I really feel the fact that I was offered a 3D mammogram for the first time in my life here at the Sarasota Breast Cancer Center, it totally saved my breasts and my life and gave me a fighting chance against breast cancer. And I missed the mammogram when I moved here and I was under an amount of stress and I'm going to start crying. But um, you know, 
It's just so preventable. If you, early detection is just so important. I can't stress it enough. So through your early mammograms, you started at 35 years old. Yes, I was extremely proactive, and I don't know why. I never had cancer or breast cancer, any cancer on either side of my family. But for me, it just became very important to take care of your body, your health, and be aware of everything. So I was quite surprised, shocked, and saddened when they told me I was, you know, um, estrogen positive with breast cancer. I just couldn't believe it. Wow. So important to take care of our bodies. This is true. And a little bit about your experience as her best friend through this experience. Well, I've tried to be the, you know, her main support uh, for her and uh, help her along the way. And um, all you can do is be there for your friend. So. What's one takeaway um, that you would tell a newly diagnosed woman? Stay positive and just believe in yourself and make sure you just get the best information out there and don't be afraid to share your information. Very, very great advice. Kathy, what was the hardest part for you uh, getting through this experience and your diagnosis and what got you through it? Um, probably my family and my faith. And the hardest part was that I was kind of alone. I was newly moved here and um, didn't really have a lot of friends or support yet. Um, so I just, you know, had to really connect with who was close to me in the community. And obviously a great team of doctors. Fabulous team of doctors here and in Tampa at Moffitt. Wonderful. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to each and every one of you. We are here today and tonight. We thank you for joining forces with us as we unite to attack breast cancer. My name is Maverick Johnson with iHeartMedia and 92.1 CTQ. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the American Cancer Society's 2018 Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. This is our kickoff. First thing we would like to do is welcome our survivors tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Survivors are the heart of making strides against breast cancer. They're the reason why we continue to do what we do at the American Cancer Society. Let's give them a round of applause as they come front and center. Ladies, that was a beautiful, powerful to watch you all walk through here. My name is Lulu. I'm from iHeartMedia, 921 CTQ. And I have to tell you, I'm honored to be here with all of you tonight. We're here together. We've come together as women and men who have battled breast cancer, as caregivers who have been in the trenches fighting alongside our loved ones who have battled breast cancer, as supporters who have worked alongside a friend or a coworker 
who has battled breast cancer, as advocates who are fighting to ensure the laws that protect those who have battled breast cancer. And we are all here united in the fight against breast cancer. And you know what? Yes, what unites us ignites us. You with me? Are you ready to get fired up? Good. We're asking you to do two things for us today. We're going to give you two ways to become a member of the American Cancer Society Army and help attack cancer from every angle. And then we're going to ask you to take action. And here's the first way. Connect with us socially and share your passion for the fight with your incredible social network of like-minded friends and family. Here's how to find us. On Facebook, Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, Cancer of Sarasota Manatee. On Instagram, MSABC lowercase Sarasota Manatee. Also, hashtag Minnesota Strides. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and share photos of today's kickoff. It's a simple but incredibly impactful way you can join the fight against breast cancer. As Lulu said earlier, what unites us also ignites us. We can't save lives, we can't provide free lodging, we can't provide and answer those calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We can't fund research without the support of many sponsors who raise their hands and say, I'm in. I'm in this fight against breast cancer with you. So please join me in thanking our sponsors. We are proud to announce our new pink premier sponsor for this year's event, Core Construction. Let's welcome David Ellis to the stage to say a few words. Good evening. My name is David Ellis, and I'm with Core Construction. And we're really humbled to be a part of this event and to join with you in this great effort um, on this just an amazing event. Um, you know, breast cancer affects so many, even within our company. And just in the last few months, a dear coworker um, was diagnosed and has begun treatment. Um, the, the spouse of one of our, um, our leaders was, um, has been going through treatment. As a matter of fact, she had her last treatment just Tuesday. And um, we're very excited about that. But, and, e and even in my family, um, just a few years ago, I lost my sister-in-law to breast cancer and saw the difficulty and the battle she had over five years. But most importantly, or even more importantly now, is the effect it had, because when she died, she left behind a 13-year-old daughter, and she struggled. And we've spent a lot of time with her and help, trying to help her you know, deal with so many of the issues of losing her mom. But breast cancer has a profound effect on all of us, and I'm sure everybody can come up here and tell their stories of their own personal battles or battles they've been through with friends, and this is such an important effort. And I would really encourage everybody to do t you know, just a couple of things. First of all, open your hearts, which I know you've already done because you're here, but open your checkbooks. Let's, let's put it out there. And lastly, open your mouths. Tell people. Talk to your friends. Talk to your coworkers. Talk to your neighbors. Get them involved in this wonderful event and this, in this important fight. And let's make this our greatest year ever for this event. We're, we at Core Construction are so proud to be a part of it, and we're looking forward to its great success. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you, Core Construction. We are excited to be back here at the Ritz-Carlton Sarasota in this beautiful venue. We would like to thank them for sponsoring our 2018 kickoff. We would like to invite the general manager, Damien O'Reardon, to say a quick welcome to everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful to see you all here uh, again this year. Uh, we're delighted to partner with uh, Making Strides. It's such a wonderful event for such a wonderful cause. If this keeps on going at this rate, I think we're going to have to build a, a bigger ballroom. Um, 
I, I myself am a real man wearing pink for the third year, uh, so I'm very proud. But I think it's important that I tell you a little story, because I did it for the last two years. And uh, fundraising always takes a little bit of work, right, as we all know. And I was thinking about taking a year off. So I was at a neighbor's house, and I have wonderful neighbors. And a good neighbor of mine, Carrie, said to me, oh, Damien, uh, are you going to do Real Men Wear Pink again this year because um, I'm going to be the income chair? And I said, oh, Carrie, you know, I, I did it the last two years. I think, I'm, I think I'm going to take a year out. And she said, oh, OK, I understand. So I was walking home with my wife, Lorna, and I said to Lorna, I said, Lorna, I just told Carrie I was going to take a year out. And after everything that Carrie has been through and all of these amazing ladies who walked up here past the stage today, what right do I have to take a year out from helping to find a cause against such a terrible disease that has impacted so many? So, and I, I'm, just, I'm just being very honest with you. So I called Eric, my, uh, my golf partner. He's a much better golfer than I am. And I said, Eric, uh, I, I just said, just please tell Carrie I'm, I'm in. And Carrie, I'm in because of you. And I'm in because of all the survivors uh, who are in this room today, whether you've survived it or whether you're currently fighting it, because one thing that I'm learning about this awful disease, it, it just impacts so many people, and while it may not impact us today, it may impact somebody very close to us tomorrow or next week or the week after, and we have to find a cure. So if I'm in, I know you're all in. Um, I have the wonderful Brian Cooper from the Ritz-Carlton Beach Club. Stand up, Brian. He's with me also. He's a real man wearing pink. So, so, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we have our sponsor table, ship table over there for all the re real men wearing pink. Please take a moment to go over and, uh, and donate, and hopefully we'll see you all at the fashion show. Thank you all so much, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Damien. Well, this gathering would not be possible without the support of our 2018 kickoff sponsors. We'd like to thank them right now. PSAV for the audio visuals tonight. Northwestern Mutual, our valet parking sponsor. Gold Coast Eagle and Johnson Brothers Liquor Company. Beneva Flowers and Plantscapes and Affairs in the Air. Tap Snap. Starbucks and Petals and Sugar for the sweet treats and coffee. Thank you so much. Also, thank you to Avon the national presenting sponsor of Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. Yes. Avon is known for empowering women and being a passionate supporter of women's health, especially breast cancer prevention and treatment. In fact, Avon has donated more than $800 million to breast cancer causes. Yes. educated 180 million women about this disease, and funded breast health screenings for nearly 20 million women. Thank you to the Avon reps, and if there's Avon reps in this room, please stand. We'd like to say thank you. A any Avon reps? Don't be shy. There you are. Thank you. They're in the back, everybody. We also want to extend a big thank you to Zeta Tau Alpha Sorority as the National Survivor Ambassador of Making Strides. ZTA volunteers will volunteer for more than 300 walks in communities nationwide. Thank you so much. Any of the ZTA reps in the room, stand up. <laughs> Alongside with these sponsors, our event sponsors serve as leaders in the fight against breast cancer through both their donations and team fundraising. We are very lucky to have the continued support of so many great companies in our community. We'd like to thank our event sponsors, Gulf Coast Community Foundation, Saracen Memorial Cancer Institute, Florida Cancer Specialists, Lakewood Ranch Gymnastics, Wealth Strategy Partners, Cox Chevrolet with the awesome Camaro over there in the men's corner. Did you get to see that? Nathan Benderson Park. The mall at University Town Center. 
Sable Palm Bank, T-Mobile, Truly Nolan, UNFI, United Natural Foods, and of course, to help get the word out about our event, we want to thank our 2018 media partners. They're working hard to keep the dialogue going about our cause. iHeartMedia, ABC7, The Herald Tribune, METV, and SRQ Media. We thank them all for their amazing support. Thank you to all of our sponsors for truly making an impact in the fight against breast cancer. And you know what? Our past event participants are equally as important as our sponsors. And do you know why? Because every single donation, every single dollar, no matter how big or how small, helps someone who's been touched by breast cancer. So if you're a past team participant, maybe you've been a team leader or part of a team, Please stand so we can give you a big thank you. Don't be shy. There we go. The fight against breast cancer is on. Keep standing now. If you've ever made a donation to the American Cancer Society, even if it was just a dollar, keep standing if you did that. He made that donation, even if it was a dollar. Now, if you're here and want to put an end to breast cancer, please stand. That's all of us, right? United Ignited. Everybody, look around the room. This is your team in the fight against breast cancer. So why are you here today? You can be seated. She should have, she should have said that. <laughs> she left you hanging there for a second. Why are you here today? What ignites your passion? Think about that for a moment. What gets you all fired up to do the life-saving work of attacking cancer, breast cancer. The important work, taking time out of your day to fundraise, to help the American Cancer Society in their mission. Maybe you, yourself, you've heard the words, you have cancer, and you're working hard to ensure that no one else hears those words. Maybe your wife, sister, mother has been diagnosed, and this is your way of doing something about it. Maybe you're here because your company is supporting the event, and you came here to support your coworkers and your company. Maybe you've heard that breast cancer death rates have decreased by 39% between 1989 and 2015, which has contributed to saving more than 322,000 lives. Yes. Maybe this. Maybe you heard there are now more than 3 million breast cancer survivors in the United States today, and the number keeps going up and up. Maybe you've thought that's great, but we can do better. Whatever the reason, the bottom line is we're here all united together in this fight, ready to tackle cancer and take it to the ground. We would now like to recognize someone who is truly tackling cancer from every angle. Kathy King, team leader for Team Pookie. Now, before Kathy comes up, I want to brag a little on this team. Kathy started Team Pookie four years ago with a couple of friends. In that time, these volunteers have worked relentlessly to fundraise for the mission to the tune of nearly $75,000. So Team Pookie was number one in Sarasota Manatee, number six in fundraising in the state of Florida, and number 42 in the entire nation for fundraising. <laughs> Kathy's team is what we call a pace setter. 
Members of the Pace Setters Club go above and beyond achieving extraordinary fundraising results for the American Cancer Society, tackling breast cancer, raising money of at least $2,500. Team Pookie had nine team members in the Pace Setter Club. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kathy King. I don't know what I'm going to talk about now. <laughs> well, I got a lot to talk about, actually. I could have you here for the next hour. Um, I'm going to tell a story. Everybody loves a good story. So uh, this table over there, I already walked over. Florida cancer, especially, are near and dear to my heart right now. So I'm going to give you a short story. It happened about six months ago, because my treatment's coming up. See you soon. Um, I have rheumatoid arthritis. And I was on Humira and met the trach site, and I know there's a lot of nurses in this room, they all know what that's about. And it's not working, so they put me on a drug called Remicade. Well, to find out, I have to go to Florida Cancer Specialist to get this drug. I'm like, eh. <laughs> I was, thought God was playing a crazy trick on me, because he really was. Um, I go, and I go in this room, and there's like probably 30 chairs of people getting chemo. I sit down, and I'm sitting there, and this lady comes and sits next to me, and her name is Alice, and I don't know where she's at in her journey right now, but every day I pray for her. Uh, uh, so she sat down, she says, what are you here for? You know, and what am I going to say? I'm like, oh, I don't have cancer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but she did, and she missed, she's like, I just moved here, and I'm like, well, that's great, and she's like, I missed one mammogram, and I'm like, I'm sorry, and she goes, I missed one mammogram, and I'm like, okay, I got this, and this is not going to go well for me, and uh, she says, I have stage four breast cancer. Needless to say, as some of you know, I lost it. I just grabbed her hand, and talked about making strides, talked about the future. She was getting chemo even prior to getting both of her breasts removed and her lymph nodes. I, I, all I could do is say is I'll pray for you, and I have every day, every day. A little posty note on my mirror, a reminder. Um, this story is just about because, you know, going into this year that I said that I would sign the team up, we wouldn't go as far as we did. You know, I was just going to do it because this is the right thing to do. And uh, after sitting there, I left there, went down to the river, bawled, called my wonderful girlfriend, told her about the experience I just had. And it changed my life. Because uh, Team Pookie <laughs> is going for number one in the state this year. There is no stopping us. Our goal is $55,000. So thank American Florida Cancer Specialist over there for that. So that's something to be proud of. This table in front of me is going to work. And let me tell you, we've started and we're working every other week. We've been at events. Uh, places are hosting them. Um, it's going to take a lot to beat out the hard rock of all things. <laughs> I don't have near their money, but we're going to do it. Um, you know, we're pretty excited about doing this. This whole table in front of you thinks I'm absolutely crazy. Uh, we have one huge event this year that we're going to do, and I'm, I'm hoping to see everybody in this room at it. It's called Kicking Cancer Country Style. It is a country concert we're putting on in Manatee County. And we've got some really good sponsors this year. Um, that is gonna be a huge event on October 7th. We're hoping to raise $25,000 that day alone. But I want you to know something, you know, I have to tell you, this table is very competitive. That is, I ain't kidding, they are. Uh, but it's not about the competition here. You know, it, it's about how much we can give back. When we do that walk, we love coming in last, because, only because we drink a little bit, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but 
We come in last because that's, that's our pride we're walking. We gave everything we could. Just last year alone, $38,000 in four months. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I mean, you figure there was nine pay setters out of 18 on that team. The last night, I don't know if you remember last year, I used to have long hair. Somebody said, I'll give you $1,000 for your hair. <laughs> okay, I'll take it right there. And she said, I'll give you $1,000. Well, needless to say, I look really good with short hair now. <laughs> I mean, there is not a person in this room that doesn't need to set their goal to $2,500 and be a pay setter. Because, you know, even if you don't get there, you, you, you're still taking that chance. You can get there. Anybody can do it. I mean, I look at mine, and every, every once in a while, I'll be, oh, look, got another $100. That's great. It, everything. I mean, you, survivors, you guys are my heroes. I mean, you know, they say, oh, you know, what do you walk for? Oh, my God. You guys walk through that door, and everybody's looking at me like, Kathy, don't cry. How could you not? I mean, I sit, ne I sit next to you now. I agree with that one. I mean, I sit next to you in those chairs. I'll be doing this forever. I mean, and that's guys, God telling me, you, yep, you're doing this forever. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I mean, there's, I mean, that whole table is family, friends, my pastor. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of business owners. I mean, I mean, we come together to do this for the survivors. I mean, you know, you know, somebody said, well, how many survivors on your team? There's, well, there's two, and then Susie Bruce, who we lost last year. I mean, and that woman's my mentor. She gave 20% of her check every week to cancer. I mean, that to me is amazing. I mean, if you wonder what you're fighting for, it's for all these survivors in here. It's an amazing cause. I mean, Bethany's got her hands full. She does a wonderful job putting this together, and kudos to her. I am very proud to stand up here and tell you guys to get off your butts and raise money. We need it. Because if I'm going to be number one in the state, that means you guys are going to be number one in the state. So we're going to put Manatee and Sarasota County on the map, being number one in the state of Florida for making strides this year. Thank you, guys. I got to raise these up for Kathy now. I thought you said you had nothing to talk about. I knew that. All right, so here's the question. Who's going to join Kathy and her team and be a pace setter? Come on now. We, every October, have that walk, and we recognize our pace setters. If you've ever reached pace setter status, you know you're there the day of the walk. But right now, if you've ever been a pace setter, please stand so we can recognize you and thank you for your dedication as Kathy and her team stand from being past pace setters. If you've been a past pace setter, please stand. You can do this. As Kathy said, think about your circle, think about your friends, bring them in. We can all do this and fight this terrible disease together. Sorry about that. Speaking of fundraising, we know that while one person may be facing a cancer diagnosis, it really takes a team of incredible sponsors and supporters to help them along their journey, from oncologists to family members to coworkers and more. We're all in this together to help the ones we love and care about because breast cancer affects everyone, women and men. That's why we're recruiting men to fight breast cancer through Real Men Wear Pink. Now, this distinguished group of community leaders is determined to raise awareness and money to support the American Cancer Society's mission and save more lives than ever before from breast cancer. Let's give a round of applause to our Real Men Wear Pink chair, Joy McLean.
for steering this group of dedicated candidates in their efforts. These 24 men listed on the screen will be leading the fight against breast cancer with their fundraising efforts this season. Will the 2018 Real Men Wear Pink candidates please stand? And they're handsome. How do you like that? Yeah, let's hear it for them. Guys, men, real men who wear pink, thank you for your dedication and commitment to our mission. We can all support these men by attending the Real Men Reveal fashion show. Mark your calendars, all right? It's going to be September 29th. That's a Saturday presented by the Mall at University Town Center. So you all need to be here. Last year they did this as well with the reveal. It was a lot of fun. All the men were strutting their stuff down the runway and some hot fashions from the mall. And we want to thank the uh, Mall at UTC once again for producing such an amazing event for our community. Hope to see you there. The men will be dressed by stores in the mall as well and will be officially introduced to the community. So be sure to stop by the men's corner over by the Chevy Camaro, you can't miss it, to get more information about how to support these men in their individual fundraising events. It's gonna be cool. We're in a fight against breast cancer. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among American women, except for skin cancers. It's the second leading cause of cancer death in American women after lung cancer. It is an insidious disease that attacks far too many people. We all know, we all love someone that has been affected by breast cancer. It drains them of their energy, makes them face their mortality far too soon, and all too often, it takes loved ones away from us. But here's what cancer can't do. It can't keep us from working to ensure no one in our community or our nation faces breast cancer alone. It can't diminish our hope that our participation in making strides against breast cancer will help raise funds, the funds that ultimately will eliminate the pain and suffering caused by breast cancer. It can't change our faith in the American Cancer Society, their researchers who are working tirelessly to find a cure due to the funding they receive from this event. And it can't take away our passion to put an end to fight this disease forever. So today we unite you, me, and millions of others across the country to make strides against breast cancer, to ignite our communities and to fight back so that people like our next two speakers, Tanya and Myrtle, know they are not alone. Yes, Tanya. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tanya. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As I said, my name is Tanya Singh Syme. Before I begin, I would like to start by recognizing everyone in this room. Every one of us is here because we've been affected by this terrible disease in one way or another. But what this disease doesn't know is that it's allowing something stronger than itself to form in this room this evening. It's forming a room full of fighters, and a room full of questions that are being answered. My relationship with cancer started when my mother was diagnosed with gastric cancer. She was 35 and I was 13 at the time. It was just the two of us. By the time I turned 14, I had to learn how to drive to get my mother to her doctor's appointments and her surgeries. Had I known about the American Cancer Society's Road to Recovery program, I could have avoided that one stress in my life. I dropped out of high school so I could become a full-time caregiver until my mother was put into hospice on Christmas Eve. My mother fought her battle for three long years, and shortly after I turned 16, she lost her life. But guess what? That cancer didn't die with her. 
It continued to live inside of me, waiting. Fast forward to two weeks after I turned 30 years old. I was nursing my then five and a half month old baby girl and my worst fears stared me in the face. After fighting what I thought was a blocked duct, I ended up having an emergent ultrasound, following with a mammogram, following an emergent visit with my doctor to find out that I indeed had a large mass, a large mass of stage three breast cancer in my left breast. At that moment, my mind went straight to my mother and then my children. I couldn't believe this has cycled back to me. I couldn't believe this was it. Everything moves so quickly. I was literally given three days before I had to start chemo. So I allowed myself those three days. Those three days to grieve. Those three days to break down in the formula aisle at Walmart while I had to emergency wean my newborn off my breast. Three days to cry in a mirror at Target while I tried on scarves for my head. And three days to fear the end of my life and leaving my children motherless as I was. But on that third day, I woke up and I decided I didn't have time for this. And I woke up and I was ready to fight. <laughs> After 12 rounds of chemo and losing my hair, it was now time to say goodbye to the very things that tried to kill me. At that moment, I felt like everything that defined me as a woman was gone. I hated that not only did I not feel good, I hated the way I looked. But with the Look Good, Feel Good program that the American Cancer Society society, excuse me, provides. It allows you the tools to feel normal again, even pretty. They taught me how to tie my scarves, how to do my makeup, how to put on eyelashes, how to draw my eyebrows. In fact, I was actually looking so good. There was people in this community that thought I was faking having cancer <laughs> because I didn't look sick. I was actually gaining my confidence back, and even some. But that wasn't the end of my story. While I was doing 60 rounds of radiation, I discovered a new life-changing test, genetic counseling. After testing, I learned I carry a gene mutation called CDH1, which causes breast cancer and also another horrible cancer, hereditary diffuse gastric cancer. This gene holds an 85% risk of gaining that cancer. This is exactly what I lost my mother to. So of course it was a no-brainer to me. I decided to eliminate that risk, take my stomach and take everything else you can with it. So three months after radiation, I had a total gastrectomy and a total hysterectomy. And this was a decision that literally saved my life. After the biopsies, it came back with more cancer on my ovary. And I was then re-diagnosed at stage four metastatic breast cancer. I am a stage four breast cancer survivor. Thank you. <laughs> to even say those words out loud gives me butterflies, and I'm simply amazed with myself. So here I am today standing in front of you. I'm 33 years old. I've been taking care of myself since I was 13. But I'm a college graduate. I have a great career in healthcare, which I love. I'm a wife. I'm a mother to two beautiful children. I have no stomach, no reproductive organs. I'm in full menopause. <laughs> a couple of fake boobs. And I am a stage four breast cancer survivor. 
<laughs> you see, cancer's actually given me something. It's given me a lot of answers. It's allowed me to find a way to fight this for my children before they have to. It's given me a way to know and understand my mother on a deeper level and know what she must have been going through as a mother. It's given me a way to see my beauty inside and out. And it has given me my life. So guess what, cancer? This girl wins. <laughs> now I get to inspire other men and women to know they will win too. And of course, look good while doing it, right? <laughs> so this evening, I really want to thank all of you for listening to my story. I really want to thank my table over here with my support system, my husband, my two, kid, my two kids, and my amazing boss, who has supported me 100% through this. I especially want to thank the American Cancer Society for everything that they do for all of us in this community. And I want to thank them for having me here today and providing us with so many tools to fight the good fight. Thank you. Tanya, ladies and gentlemen. We have another speaker for you, another survivor, happy to say. I'd like to introduce to you Myrtle Grasso. She's a hard act to follow. <laughs> Age. There but for the grace of God go I. How many of you have thought of that? My name is Myrtle Grasso. I usually go by Mert. I am a retired um, teacher of 33 years, it's a long time, 68 years old, and I'm 16 years a survivor of breast cancer. <laughs> Thanks, I'm proud. My story, and we all have one, for ourselves and our loved ones. I don't have to explain to you your stories or mine, but I do want to go through mine to some extent. I had a sudden burn in my breast and a lump within a two-week period. I had had a mammogram and an ultrasound five months before, and it wasn't there. Be the proactive person my husband and I are, I went to the gynecologist immediately. They suggested that I see a surgeon and suggested one. After many tests, it was a result of a fast-growing tumor with overactive gene called HER2. They also found out that I was not hormone receptive. And for those of you who are familiar with that, that means no Herceptin or anything afterwards. My oncologist from Florida Cancer Specialist, Karen Silver, and, and clinical study nurse Lynn Bentz, informed me of a clinical study 
called B31. It was a randomly selected clinical study. So it wasn't something I could definitely get into. The study was for Herceptin, which is an antibody to help the immune system kill cancer cells. Now, we've all heard about the immune system nowadays with cancer. So this was like the pre-system pre of, of the Herceptin. I went for surgery and had a lumpectomy. Lost about a third of my breast. They took the sentinel nodes out, and for those of you that are not familiar with it, those are the nodes that are connected to the breast, and cancer was found in those. A week later, I was back in the hospital for another surgery, and they took the rest of the nodes under my arm, and there was cancer in them. I was scheduled on the very first day of my chemo for the Herceptin study. I got into the study, which was amazing. I was one of 2,700 women in the study in the USA. My schedule was six months of chemo, six weeks of radiation, and one week, one year of Herceptin infused a total of 15 months. The American Cancer Society helped fund this Herceptin study. The research, ASC, and the Herceptin saved my life, as did my husband and caregiver and rock, Tom. We need to praise our caregivers. Since then, we have been very active with the ACS, done many Relay for Lifes, making strides both in Arizona and in Florida. I've done several survivor talks, and we've participated in many events. I want to thank making strides in the American Cancer Society for allowing me to explain my story to you and the fight that we have to make. Thank you. Thank you, Myrtle. Thank you, Tanya. Just like these two survivors, we are all passionate about putting an end to this disease and ensuring that no one faces breast cancer by themselves. But we can't do it with passion alone. We can't do it with hope alone. It takes money to find cures, to fund cures. It takes money to ensure that cancer patients can get these free rides from the American Cancer Society to and from treatment. It takes money to ensure cancer patients have a free place to stay when they're receiving treatment far from home. It takes money to answer the call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And that's where fundraising comes in and why everyone in this room is so important to a person facing breast cancer diagnosis. Earlier, we told you there are two ways to become part of the American Cancer Society Army. The first was to follow us on social media and to share your commitment to the fight against breast cancer with your social network. The second is this. Join the American Cancer Society in the fight against breast cancer and sign up as a team leader. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happens with the money you raise. $500 could help provide three newly diagnosed cancer patients with a trained navigator to help remove barriers and guide them through treatment when they must travel for cancer treatment. $50 could help provide patients with caregivers with one night of free lodging. Even just $35 
can help provide a breast cancer patient with one-on-one -on -one peer support from a breast cancer survivor through the American Cancer Society's Reach to Recovery program. We can only make that happen, provide all those free rides, give patients free lodging, fund life-saving cancer research with money raised by generous people like you who become team leaders. I need you to commit to signing up as a team leader right now. The woman who was diagnosed with breast cancer this morning needs you. The mother who will be diagnosed next week needs you to do this. Your sister, wife, friend who will receive that cancer diagnosis 10 years from now needs you to do this today. It's your pledge to the cancer survivors in this room, the brave people who have battled cancer and are no longer here, and to those who will hear the words, you have cancer in the future. It's your pledge that you choose to take up the fight in their honor, in their memory. So you can be a team leader? Team leaders? So you have cards on the table. This is where you look at your table. You look for the card. There's pledge cards. While you're completing the cards on the table, there's also an app for that. That's right. Be sure to download the American Cancer Society fundraising app from the App Store or Google Play. I also want you to know the American Cancer Society is here to offer you help and guidance too. So when you take that next step to become a team leader, the American Cancer Society has all the tools and resources you need to be successful, like the website and your personal fundraising dashboard, which is available once you register online. It allows you to track donations, send out pre-written, customizable emails to recruit others, and ask for donations. In fact, participants who send emails through the dashboard raised on average 10 times more than those who do not. I know this because I have done this. You can do this. It's not overwhelming. They make it very simple and very easy for you. It's a quick way, sending out some emails to raise a few hundred dollars with just a couple of clicks. And for those of you who sign up today, you're going to receive a team leader kit with ideas and resources to help you get started in your fundraising. So have you got those pledge cards? Let me see. Got your pledge cards? Are we ready? And when you raise $25 before September 25th, you can choose between one of the registration incentives. This is nice. A united bandana. Let me hear it for the bandana. Or a united cape. All right, now I want you to imagine what October 20th is going to really feel like when you show up at that walk and you're able to say, I've made an impact in the fight against breast cancer. I've helped fund a researcher who's going to put an end to this disease. I helped give a cancer patient a fighting chance. It's going to feel incredible because you and every other person who helped raise money to attack cancer is getting us one step closer to the day where this disease is a distant memory. Are we together on that? I think so. It needs to go. Thank you all for the great work you've already done and for all the tremendous fundraising work you're about to do. All right, so could everybody hold up their team leader pledge cards? Everybody hold up your team leader pledge cards. Come on. I'm missing a few on this side right here. Uh, what about this side right here? Make sure you complete these. Hand it in at the end of the program. We're almost there. And that's when you're going to receive your team leader kit and gift. And if you registered online, you can pick up your kit and your gift tonight as well. All right? All right. Now we have one more way you can join American Cancer Society in the fight against cancer. I'm going to bring up Rebecca McKenzie, a volunteer with ACS CAN, the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Rebecca, please step up. Okay. Thank you so much. 
Oh my goodness. Good evening. <laughs> I came in today and I've, I've talked at these events before and I've never seen a crowd like this, so it's completely amazing. My name is Becky McKenzie and I'm proud to be a part of the American Cancer Society's Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk and a member of the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, or ACS CAN. For those of you who aren't already members, let me tell you a little bit about ACS CAN and our incredible breast cancer advocates. Just like you and I, many ACS CAN members have been touched by breast cancer and they are leading the way in telling Congress and our state that cancer must be a national priority. Congress holds the purse strings for funding programs that work to detect cancer early and in some cases prevent it altogether. They can make the difference in ending all cancers as we know it. This includes breast cancer. The facts are clear. Cancer screenings like mammograms and pap tests save lives, and the National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program that provides these cancer screenings to low-income women only has enough funding to serve one in 10 people who need it. This program partially funds Florida's Mary Brogan Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. This helps ensure all women have access to life-saving screenings, like mammograms and pap tests, and if needed, the treatment that they need to beat the disease. Every year, Florida ACS CAN fights to ensure that the program continues to receive state funds. We need members of Congress to use their power and fully fund this life-saving program so that those other nine women can access life-saving screenings too. ACS CAN members play a critical part in holding lawmakers accountable for their role in this funding. We need ACS CAN members. We need people who will use their voice to influence and hold elected officials accountable to make sure our tax dollars are spent on helping women receive mammograms. Many of us are here today because we've personally fought breast cancer or we care about someone who's fought it. And every single one of us in this room has some story about how some kind of cancer has touched our lives. I would like to tell you a little bit about my story and why I'm involved with ACS CAN. I was born with cancer. Yes, born with it. So Tanya, when you shared your story, it really touched me. My entire side of my father's, my father's side of the family, everyone has the same cancer. Research is my only hope for a cure. I have a rare disorder called multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A. My disorder causes problems with the endocrine system, including tumors of the adrenal glands and medullary thyroid cancer, which has no systemic cure. Because of the inability to cure my disease, it was determined I would have to live with it for the rest of my life. People with it depend heavily on clinical trials and research. Research. We need research. My cancer has either been slow growing or stable for almost 10 years. And I could not be more grateful for those 10 years because it has given me an opportunity to tell my story. I need to tell my story. I will tell my story until there's a cure for my cancer. 
Did you know that the most effective way to fight cancer in this country is to talk to your lawmakers and support the American Cancer Society? The federal government is the largest funder of research in the United States, and without that funding, we don't get all of those new drugs. Without the National Institute of Health, we don't get all of those new drugs. Currently, the National Institute of Health is studying the effects of immunotherapy and targeted therapies on medullary thyroid cancer. And it is ACS CAN's advocacy with our state and federal governments that helps ensure that clinical trials and studies like this continue for people like me. ACS CAN has given me opportunities to travel to Tallahassee and Washington, D.C. to meet with and tell my story to lawmakers. I have been able to tell them how people with my disease are desperate for research and that our only hope right now is research. I told them how desperately I need a cure. For the past few years, we've focused heavily on quality of life for people like me, living with cancer, not dying, living fully and completely every single day. That's where the Pachita Palliative Care and Hospice Education and Training Act comes into place. We've encouraged our members of Congress to co-sponsor this bill that helps people with cancer get a person-centered team approach that focuses on the whole person, not just the disease. We've asked our lawmakers to support colorectal cancer screening legislation that helps colorectal survivors, like my stepfather, have affordable access to screenings throughout their lifetimes. And of course, we're constantly sharing our stories to help them understand the importance of federal funding for research. ACS and ACS can go hand in hand. We need both of them. I never stand up here and speak just for me. I speak for my friends Liz and Maureen, who died of the same disease that I have. Sorry. I speak for my aunt, who was diagnosed with stage four cervical cancer and passed away in April. She is why I help ACS CAN advocate for the Mary Brogan Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. The program helps medically underserved women and saves a lot of money in the process right here in Florida. I speak for every person that bounces from clinical trial to clinical trial, hoping that this one will be the one I do want you to know that I don't live with regret or sorrow. I do not feel sorry for myself. And I don't want you to feel sorry for me either. I want you to join me. I want you to feel motivated. I live every day with passion and with love and with an ACS CAN style fight in my voice. I hope your voice will join mine because I will never stop sharing my story. And now that you've heard my story, I want you to think about who or what brought you here today and ask you to make that decision right now to join me and thousands of other breast cancer advocates by either becoming a member of ACS CAN for the first time or by renewing your membership tonight. Tonight, with a $20 donation, you will receive the 2018 Power of the Purse pin that you probably saw on the ACS CAN table in the back. And if you are ready to join us, I'm asking you to please hold up the registration form in front of you, and one of our volunteers will come by and collect your form and bring you the pin. That $20 goes such a long way for me for my family, for every person in this room. 
My name is Becky McKenzie. I'm from Florida's 19th Congressional District. I have a voice because of the American Cancer Society and the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Thank you for becoming an advocate for ACS CAN and helping us fund life-saving mammograms. Thank you so much. Rebecca, everyone. So we've united today to make strides against breast cancer, to unite against breast cancer, to ignite our passion to attack breast cancer from every possible angle, and to show the world that what unites us ignites us. When you join Making Strides Against Breast Cancer as a team leader, a team participant, as a donor, you are saving lives. You are funding breakthrough, life-saving cancer research. You're helping those who are confronting breast cancer this minute by funding things they need, things they need right now. Keep in mind the stories and the people you've heard from today. Remember about them. Remember the people that are no longer with us. Facing cancer is hard. Compared to facing cancer, fundraising is a breeze. Compared to fighting cancer, asking for a donation is nothing. Compared to fighting cancer, posting on social media, sending some emails, and asking for donations, it's really simple. You can do this. I know you can. When we tally those fundraising numbers in October, I expect to see Sarasota Manatee at the top of the charts. Together, we are ignited to take action against breast cancer. I look forward to seeing all of you, our united team, October 20th at Nathan Benderson Park. You gonna be there? Say yeah! All right, now, before you go anywhere, a couple more things I wanna tell you, and then at the end of this, we are also gonna draw, um, there's a raffle for an Avon gift, so, but I, I have a couple more things to tell you. Three, three, oh my gosh, don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, be sure to drop off your ASC CAN forms and receive your purse pin. Don't forget to pick up your team leader bag on your way out. Visit our mission table for program service information and supplies. Visit our men's corner for information about our Real Men Wear Pink campaign. Where are you going to be September 29th? The mall at UTC. Say hello to the Avon representatives if you haven't already. Make sure you visit the photo booth and make sure you share how you are giving hope. Register your team tonight. All right, guys, we're going to draw three prizes. Okay, this is where penmanship is important. I'm already looking at a couple of these, and I'm scared. I hope I don't pull, or Lula doesn't pull that one. All right, do one at a time, will you? <laughs> don't. I'm gonna look no this peeking, way. yeah. I'm looking this way. I have no idea. Wait a minute. Is that a, here you go. Number one. All right, and if I call your name, you're going to head right to the Avon table, uh, right directly and back, okay? And they've got a prize for you. Jackie Mesmer. Oh, wait. Really good penmanship. Perfect penmanship, Jackie. Beautiful. I'll give you an A. Really, you could read that really well. Let me see if I could do that again. Oh, sorry. Oh. Ariana Nikon. Ariana Nikon? Ariana? Do we have Ariana in the house? Ariana? Nelson. Nelson. Ariana Nelson? Is that it? Sorry. All right. It takes two of us to read, you see. All right. It's not great penmanship, Ariana. I hate to tell you. 
Your letters are blending together. Kathy King. Kathy King. You got good penmanship. Oh, go figure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before you leave tonight, we want to make sure you turn in those pledge cards and you sign up your team so we can make strides against breast cancer together. Thank you for being here. And that about wraps it up for the 2018 American Cancer Society Making Strides Against Breast Cancer kickoff. We've had a wonderful evening talking to supporters, sponsors, and survivors, not to mention some real men in pink. Ladies, what did you think? It was really inspiring to be here tonight, and I was really excited to hear about some of the opportunities for ways that we can all help. I'm excited for the upcoming events, the walk, the uh, catwalk at the mall, uh, the, seeing the men strut their stuff in pink on the catwalk. Her husband's strutting his stuff, so stay tuned. We're going to have coverage on the real men wearing pink and also the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer walk on October 20th. So stay with us. Ladies, you going to hit it? I'm Stephanie Greppling with METV.